Okay, so we are praying Ephesians chapter 3. Paul wrote letters to the church. So this is something that we need to pray for ourselves and one another. I, Paul, am a prisoner of Christ because of my preaching to you Gentiles. As you already know, God has given me the special ministry of announcing his favor to you Gentiles. As I briefly mentioned earlier in this letter, God himself revealed his secret plan to me. As you read what I've written, you will understand what I know about this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now he has revealed it by the Holy Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. This is the secret plan. The Gentiles have an equal share with the Jews in all the riches inherited by God's children. Both groups have believed the good news, and both are part of the same body and enjoy together the promise of blessings through Christ Jesus. By God's special favor and mighty power, I've been given the wonderful privilege of serving him by spreading this good news. Just think, though I did nothing to deserve it, and there I am, the least deserving Christian there is. I was chosen for the special joy of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose was to show his wisdom in all its rich variety to all the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. They will see this when Jews and Gentiles are joined together in his church. This is what his plan from eternity has now been carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come fearlessly into God's presence, assured of his glad welcome. So please don't despair because of what they're doing to me here, for it is for you that I am now suffering, so you should feel honored and encouraged. When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. I pray that Christ will become more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep, his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's so great that you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. May he be given glory in the church and I in Christ Jesus forever and ever through endless ages. Amen. And so, Father, I just thank you for this prayer that you have given us to pray for ourselves, for one another. And we're going to read the prayer again. We're actually going to pray this for our friends. We're going to pray this for our family. We're going to lift up our church. We are going to lift up our community. And this is what we're going to pray for our leaders. So we lift them up to you, um, and we really are praying for those who know you, and we are praying that their eyes are going to be open and they're going to get closer to you, because these are prayers for Christians. So when I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious and limited resources, he will give you mighty strength through his Holy Spirit. So for all of those leaders, family members, colleagues, friends, community members, church leaders and members who know you um, or want to know you more, who may not even realize that there is more, they've just accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
we ask you because you have glorious unlimited resources. There is no inflation happening in heaven. There is no lack. There is no poverty. And so we draw on that right now. And from your unlimited resources that you will give them mighty inner strength through your Holy Spirit. We pray that Christ will be more and more at home in their hearts as they trust in you. May their roots grow down into the deep soil of God's marvelous love. May have, they have the power to understand. Give them wisdom and understanding as all God's people should know. How wide, how long, how high, how deep your love really is. So we're asking for all these people in our lives and whose leadership affects us, who know you, that they may comprehend your love in a deeper, more real way. May they experience the love of Christ, though it is so great that we cannot fully understand it. And then they will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from you. Um, we give you all the glory for this marvelous prayer that you have given us. And so we want to continue with these prayers. Um, and so we're going to go to Ephesians 2, verse 4. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us very much, that even while we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is by God's special favor that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. And we are seated with him in heavenly realms. All because we are one in Christ Jesus. And so God can always point to us as examples of the incredible wealth of his favor and kindness towards us. As shown in all he has done for us through Christ Jesus. God saved you by his special favor when you believe, and you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Father, I just thank you that we are your masterpiece. We need to write that down. We need to repeat that back to you. We thank you. You are your, we are your masterpiece. You created us brand new in Christ Jesus when we asked Jesus to come into our hearts. And so we can do the good things that you planned for us long ago. What are those good things, Father? We just thank you for opening our eyes. And so we thank you, we go back to Ephesians 2, verse 4. We thank you that you are so rich in mercy. We thank you that you love us so much. And even when we were dead in our sins, you gave us life when you raised Christ from the dead. And we acknowledge that it's not because of our works, that it's a gift from God, your salvation. And we thank you. We just ask you for a deeper understanding of what this means. We can never be good enough. We can never be too bad. But you want us to repent of the sin because it separates from relationship with you and from being filled with your presence and love. And that's where the strength is in life. That's where the knowledge and wisdom is. And that's what we need. We need you. We look to people more than you. Please forgive us. We look to the media and what TV and social media tells us more than you. Forgive us. We look to one another and our opinions more than you. Forgive us. There's nothing wrong with these things. We need one another and we need community and we need iron sharpens iron to, to talk about our thoughts and our feelings. Um, but we thank you. Today we repent of putting things before you. We look to you, mighty God, for all the answers. Small adjustments are happening in our hearts as our mind is renewed with your word of God. And we pray your will. Your will is the word of God. And so through this, when you raised Jesus from the dead, we were raised as well. You just gave us everything you gave Jesus. And he took our place in hell and became sin for us. And so we don't have to 
receive your wrath. You redeemed us from your wrath. And so we are seated with you in heavenly realms. Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask you for this revelation for us, for our loved ones, for our friends, for those who call on your name to be saved, that we may understand that we are seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father in heavenly realms. We are in him, not because of anything that we could do, because we are one in Christ Jesus. Help us every day to see ourselves seated in a throne in Jesus at your right hand, ruling and reigning, that we are victorious. And you say that you want to point to us as examples of the incredible wealth of your favor and kindness towards us. So may we not boast of our works, of our goodness, of our good deeds, May all that be humble before you. May you boast about us. That's very different. May you boast about our leaders. May you boast about those in our community because we turn from our wickedness and we repent of our sin and we draw near to you and you draw near to us and you fill us with your love. That is our prayer, Father, for all Christians. Um, and we just thank you and we praise you that you have given us armor. And so we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, uh, that you help us to comprehend the depth of what you've given us. Um, be strong in the Lord's mighty power. Father, right now, we lay at your feet our weariness, our questions, our doubt, our unbelief, our fear. We lay it at your feet. And you don't condemn us for those things. We're human and we have emotions, but we repent for not having faith in you. And we thank you that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so our faith is naturally rising through your word. And so we thank you um, for closeness with you and that we are strong in your mighty power. We put on your armor so that we will be able to stand firm against all strategies and tricks of the devil. So you didn't say that you were going to put the armor on us. You told us to put on your armor. So right now, we choose by being here in prayer before you in Jesus' name to put on our armor. So we can stand firm against all strategies and tricks of the devil. So you're telling us what your armor is, and we just thank you for that. We're going to keep reading and prayerfully read. For we are not fighting against people made in flesh and blood. Father, right now, we ask you to forgive us for fighting with one another and for fighting against people and engaging in that strifeful attitude. Help us to repent of that, to be the leader in that situation, even if it means managing that to people in authority over us. We really need to work on that. I ask you to forgive me and help me with my attitude and help me to yield to your humility because that really is strength. Not to fight against people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. So not even our leaders who we're frustrated with. It's not them. It's the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. So every Christian, we ask that you give this understanding to we are not fighting one another. We are not fighting those in the world. We are not fighting those in leadership. We are fighting the wickedness in the unseen world. This is a spiritual battle between Satan and God. And we are one in Jesus Christ. And we are seated at the right hand of the Father in Jesus Christ, in heavenly realms. And we have victory already given to us. So verse 13, we use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil. So after the battle, we will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth. So Father, right now, we put on the belt of truth that is going to hold us and stabilize us and hold things in place. 
your word is truth. So everything that happens, we look to you, we look to what does the word of God say? Not does what this person say, or that person say, or let me go on this social media. No, we look to you first. And that is the truth, the word of God and the body armor of God's righteousness. So we thank you. You've already told us we are right with God through Christ Jesus. It is not because of anything we could do or not do. And it's a gift from God. So we are right with you. Now we need to take that upon ourselves. And that's part of our body armor. That's what protects us in battle is we're not going to doubt our salvation or are we good enough or have we done enough or have we given enough. It's a gift from you. And so we renew our minds to that. And we repent from doubting and thinking we could ever be good enough uh, to be in your presence. You are a holy God. And so we just thank you. We receive your righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Um, and for shoes, we put on the peace that comes from the good news so that we will be fully prepared. So we thank you that the gospel is good news and that we want to give people good news. We, we don't want to draw them down with, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? When we speak, people are enlightened to know you better. And they're looking at us like, what is it about them? Uh, because God said his will is to brag on us, that we are his workmanship. And that's what he wants. And so that's a good thing when people are a little jealous and they're looking and they're saying, what is that? We know who we are in Christ. We know the victory that we have. We bring peace. And if we are not in that mode of thinking, help us to stop ourselves before we have that interaction and to think of it as seriously as you do. Because right here, you are saying part of our battle armor is peace. So you take it very serious. In every battle, we will need faith as our shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at us by Satan. Those arrows are the thoughts that come in our mind, the fear, the doubt, unbelief, the news, the true events happening, the things people say about us, and everything that we could let it entangle us and ruin our peace, and ruin our thinking that we're right with you. Uh, but instead, we hold up this huge shield of faith, and we thank you that it's quenching all those fiery darts. And Satan uses people. That's his mode of operation. And so he uses music. He uses media. And so give us discernment to see when we need to hold up that shield of faith and say, no, I'm not, I'm not receiving that. Um, the shield of faith can quench it. You can throw it. I can't stop you from throwing that dart, saying those words uh, and what you're going to say and do. I can quench those fiery darts with the shield of faith. Put on salvation as your helmet. So we thank you, our helmet. The helmet protects our mind. And we are saved. We have a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind under control. And so our mind, we're renewing with the word of God. We thank you for the peace in our minds. Um, and we take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you said that sword, what we're going to fight with, and we're fighting what is unseen is what you told us. We're not fighting people or leaders. We're fighting the spiritual forces behind them. And that's what keeps people from knowing God. That's what keeps people from being closer to God and having a strong walk with him and truly comprehending the scripture and your ways. And so we need your word. And we need to be speaking your word. And that's cutting through every situation spiritually. It's peaceful. It's wise. It's calm. And it's your way. It's what Jesus did. He spoke the word of God. And you call that a sword. Because it'll cut through situations. 
Um, if we're really emotional and our spirit is having a hard time getting strengthened by you because our emotions have flooded us and we need to calm ourselves uh, because of our nervous system and how we have responded to a situation, the word of God is going to help us get to a zone of calm where we can engage with people and enjoy life. Uh, that's the secret weapon that you have given us. And so help us to meditate in your word day and night that we may observe to do what's written in it. Joshua 1.8. You gave us that. You use the word meditate. You came up with that because, you know, when we think about your word and what your promises are and how good you are and the victory you've given us, then our actions just fall in line naturally. Um, and we have faith. And you say, pray at all times on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, you know, you told us that we would be rooted and grounded in your love and we would comprehend you further the more that we seek your face. Um, and there's power in that. And it's through your Holy Spirit. So we just yield to you and yield to your Holy Spirit for your infilling of your love. Stay alert and persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. And that's what we're doing tonight, Father. We are lifting up all Christians everywhere to come closer to you. We're praying for the church tonight to know you and to rise up for you and in your ways to fight this battle with your word in peaceful ways and um, in, in ways that we may not see it automatically, but we know that your word has power. You call your word the sword. And we know that nothing's going to harm us as long as we hold up that shield of faith. Um, and you're going to keep our minds sound. And so we thank you for your wonderful armor and for this teaching. And we're going to remind ourselves, we're going to remind one another that our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds is what holds us back from understanding you and your love and keeps people from knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's also the smoke screen that makes us think that sin is just a great life. You know, and the Bible tells us sin has pleasure for a season, but it always ends in destruction and death. And so that smoke screen for our eyes to open and for us to see the truth, because the truth will set us free. We can't have those mental arguments with people, but praying for them and praying your word over them and praying your word over ourselves. You know, you say that we need to do that for one another and there's power in our prayers. You know, and here in Ephesians 6 verse 19, Paul is asking for prayer. He was a wise man. I mean, look at everything he did for God, and yet he still asked for prayer. And he says, pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words as I boldly explain God's secret plan that the good news is for the Gentiles too. I'm in chains now for preaching this message as God's ambassador, but pray that I should keep speaking boldly for him as I should. So why did Paul ask for prayer? You know, like he's writing this letter. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's like this with God. He's getting revelation straight from the throne. He still asks for prayer because he understands we need one another. We are one body in Christ. Um, so he ends, um, verse 23, may God give you peace, dear brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. May God's grace be upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. So that's what we pray for all Christians and for ourselves. May God's grace be upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Help us to love you with the love that you love us, an undying love. That we may be on fire and filled with your love for you. And because we meditate on you, we draw close to you, we honor you with what we say and what we do. 
when we miss it, we're quick to turn from it and to say, forgive me uh, and to say, help me, because you give a lot of grace when we have that kind of attitude with you. Um, and so we ask you for your help. Uh, we ask you for your wisdom and your knowledge. We think we know. Forgive us. We don't know anything without you. Help us to be students. Help us to ask for help, just like Paul did, to ask for prayer and to receive. And we just want to thank you and we want to praise you. And you are good and your mercy endures forever. And we thank you and we praise you that you've given us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. It's been given. You withhold nothing from those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And we come to you with love. We love you, Father. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We praise you for giving us your only son that took our place so we can be close to you and be saved for eternity and have a relationship with you. And we thank you and we praise you that in your mind, the way you see things, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. You have it. You have us. You, you're taking care of us. And we're just going to trust you. Whether it's day by day, moment by moment, we're going to say, even if we're not feeling it, we trust you. We trust you. We thank you. You are faithful. You are good. And we're going to remind one another and encourage one another. When one is down, we're going to lift them up because the next day we could be down. And there's no condemnation with that. And um, we just thank and we praise you that you supply everything according to your riches and glory, not our riches and glory, not the earth's riches and glory, your riches and glory. And help us to see that, to see how abundant of supply that you have, that um, it's just we don't have to be worried. We do our part. We do what we can. Um, and you take care of the rest. We thank you that we are your children. You take care of your children. You take care of feeding the birds. Won't you feed us? And we just lift up right now needs that we have, not wants, but we lift up our needs. It could be something physical. It could be something mental. It could be, I need to be closer to you. It could be all of that. And what we need, we lift it up to you. And we ask you to take care of it. And help us to see if there's anything else we need to do in the physical, in the spiritual, in the mental realm. And the rest, help us to let it go and trust you with it once we've done everything that we can do. And may we look to you first, and may we pray about it first. Forgive us for doing everything else before we prayed and gave it to you and trying to solve it ourselves. Help us to listen for your wisdom. Help us. Give us that wisdom and understanding. Those aha moments, we need them with you. We need to be able to hear your voice, and we need to know who we are in you. So that enlightenment of our mind, Father, we're here. We're seeking that wisdom. And we thank you and we praise you for this time. We, we dedicate our lives to you for your glory and honor. And we know that you said redeem the time because the days are evil. The days are evil. We can see clearly how evil they are. Forgive us for being in a stupor. Thank you for waking us up and showing us. And for your purpose in life. We seek that. Glorify your name. May people come closer to you and may people come to you and may people know you through us. And who we say, who do we think we are? You just told us who we are. We're going to read these scriptures in Ephesians over and over until we answer and we say, yes, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Here I am, Lord, use me. We're not going to have those doubts and we're not going to think of the past. We're going to know who we are in Christ. And so I thank you and I praise you, Father. I thank you. I praise you. You've supplied all of our need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You have healed our bodies. You have saved our families. You are just good. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We praise you that you hear and answer every prayer because we pray in faith. 
We pray in love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.